Hello friends, my name is Dr. Sunil Bhatt. I am the Director and Clinical Lead of Pediatric Hematology, Oncology and Bone Marrow Transplant at the Majumdar Shah Medical Center, Narana Health City, Bangalore. Our country is the thalassemia capital of the world. Majority of thalassemics born in the world are from India and we add approximately 20,000 children with thalassemia major every year and also almost equal number of children with thalassemia intermedia every year. Uh, in our country. Being a pediatric hematologist and oncologist, a significant amount of our practice is also revolves our thalassemia major. Whether it is looking after these patients for transfusions, for complications and also for bone marrow transplants to cure them. Hence, I thought it's a very good idea to at least, you know, address some of the concerns of thalassemia major in a series of videos which would be a good educational tool uh, for the, the society at large and, but, but also to the families and the caregivers of the, of the children who are uh, having thalassemia major. So under, the, under this series of videos which I have decided I, I want to take different components of thalassemia care and address them in short videos. Which are, and I would want to try to address common questions which come to the parents and the caregivers mind. So the video now today which I am trying to do is on the basic question of what is thalassemia and how does it come you know, how does it happen in the children. So as we know our blood uh, which is the lifeline of our body has got two components. One is called a cell, cellular component, one is called the plasma or the or the fluid component. Now in the cellular components we have got the red cells or in what we measure as hemoglobin. We have got white cells and we have got platelets. These are the three components of our blood. Platelets help in clotting, white cells help in fighting infections and the red cells are the ones which give energy to our body and you know sustain life so to say. Now what happens in thalassemia major? What happens is that the bone marrow, which is the factory of all these cells, does not produce enough red cells. And the ones which are produced by the bone marrow also have a short life. As a consequence of that, these children do not have enough red cells or enough hemoglobin in their body. And hence, they require this blood or the red cells to be given from outside. And that's what's called as blood transfusion. Now, where, when does this problem start you know manifesting in the children it usually starts manifesting usually at the age of four to six months where you see that the children these babies they progress will become pale they become lethargic and you know the activity comes down some of the patients may start having vomiting loose motions at that point of time and when you go and see a doctor they tell you that the baby is very very pale baby has got big liver and big spleen and when you do a blood test it shows that the hemoglobin levels are very very low. White cells and platelets are normal in number because white cells and platelets do not have any problems in thalassemia major. And if we do not do anything for these children, those who are now diagnosed with thalassemia major as I said usually at the age of four to six months of age, if we do not do anything these the levels of the hemoglobin usually comes down and most of the children may not live more than two years of age. Hence, to save them or to, to sustain the life for the children, they require blood transfusion from outside. They require regular blood transfusion on a frequent intervals. We discuss about this blood transfusion in a separate video, in a separate session. But what I focus today is that what the thalassemia is and how it does, you know, how does it manifest and uh, why does it come first of all in the children. Now we have also seen some children being diagnosed as I said the usual age of presentation is about four to six months and that's what usually this time this, this disease is diagnosed. But some children can present a little later also. It can some, some, some children can present one year, one and a half years, two years and sometimes even later on also. And there's a group of children who have this thalassemia but it's not as severe that means they do not require blood transfusion from outside their blood levels are low but they are able to maintain some amount of blood which is okay and enough probably for them to sustain life and that's called as thalassemia intermedia that is a less severe form of thalassemia major and that's called as thalassemia intermedia
so this is how this disease basically presents now the question is why does the disease come first of all what is the why what is the cause or what is the reason for having thalassemia major now thalassemia major is a genetic disease by genetic disease i mean that it comes it's hereditary it comes from our parents it comes it runs in the families so the parents of thalassemia major kid basically are thalassemia minors or thalassemia carriers now i'll i'll be explaining you what that means the blood formation or the red cell formation in our body which is done by the bone marrow um, basically is controlled by some genes which is in our in our genetic system where we call them beta globin genes and there are two genes which which are relevant or important in making this red cells or the or the hemoglobin in a, in a, in, a, in a person and th those are called as beta globin genes now the parents of this thalassemia major baby are carriers that means they have got one normal gene and one abnormal beta globin gene or they have got one normal gene and the other gene has got a thalassemia mutation and because they out of the two genes so one is functional one is working normally because of that they do not have any problems the hemoglobin levels are a little low but they even do not know that they have something like this in their body Hemoglobins are a little low, but they do not recall blood transfusions. They are like any other normal person in, in, in the society, in the community. And when two of these carriers marry, that means mother and father, both have one normal gene and one abnormal gene. Both of them are unaware of this problem because the disease doesn't, they don't have any manifestations of this disease. And when they marry, there's a chance that these two bad genes, one from the father and one from the mother, can go into the baby, and that's what's called as thalassemia major. Now, this thalassemia major kid will have two bad genes, two bad beta globin genes, one from the mother, one from the father. Because there are two bad genes in the baby, they do not produce or they do not make blood which they are supposed to make. I, you know, I use a very, very simple example to explain this. We have two kidneys in our body which makes urine, right? You know, we have heard so many stories. If one kidney doesn't work, the other kidney is working. It's enough for us to, you know, make enough urine and we'll, you know, people are okay with even with one kidney. But if the, both the kidneys are there, which are not working or they have failed, then that's a problem. The urine will not be formed and they will have problems because of kidney failure. And that's exactly what happens in thalassemia major. Both the parents are having one abnormal gene, but they, they are unaware of it. They don't know that there is an abnormal gene. And when they marry and they have children, they have, you know, the, the baby can have thalassemia major because both the abnormal genes can come together and it's like having two bad kidneys or two failed kidneys which do not do their job. And so, so the mechanism or the, or the cause of this disease thalassemia major is genetic. It comes from parents and the, both the parents of these children are basically having thalassemia minor or what's also called as thalassemia trait. So thalassemia minor, thalassemia carrier, thalassemia trait are all same. They are, they, they are three terminologies for the same condition, which is that they are the, they are the carriers of the gene. And, and affected babies are called as thalassemia majors and some of them can be thalassemia intermediates also. So, so that was the summary of today's this video, uh, friends. And we discussed how does thalassemia manifest and what are the symptoms of thalassemia at what age it comes. And we also discussed what are the causes, why does a thalassemia major come in in the baby and what are the reasons for that. And I discussed that's a genetic cause. So we'll, we'll close this uh, discussion here today on this topic and I will be coming again with, to you with a new topic on thalassemia in a different video. Thank you very much.